Warning, this show contains graphic images and content. Viewer discretion is advised. Hello, horror fans, and welcome to The Only Genre. I am Sean Vidmar. And I broke my back on my chair. It was awesome. This is Denny Meckler. Today on our show, we like actually... Bane the chair. You ba- oh, yeah. Yeah. Batman reference. Mm-hmm. Batman's the shit. But on this episode, we actually uh, talk about a very anticipated Tim Burton movie. Um, also, Not Nightmare Before Christmas 2. Also, M is for Manador. Or Batman, even. <laughs> and um, another found footage horror movie. Death 2 has a release date of sometime in 2014, but that's actually not why we wanted to talk about it. Well, the last movie, they actually had a contest. You were given the letter T, and then you got to make a three-minute video of that letter T, and toilet one. <laughs> well, this year, they're doing it again, and M is for Manador is what you should vote for, because our friend Shane McKenzie actually wrote the script. For this one. Our old buddy. Old we, we love Shane McKenzie. Um, we actually watched this. He's watched it. Um, like I paid attention for this show. <laughs> I don't always do that. Uh, well, you, I actually showed you this one like a week ago. Yeah. And, uh, I mean. I liked it. Yeah. I loved it. I liked it. Yeah. I absolutely loved it. And I was actually going to enter for this contest. And then I got really busy. Especially like the last week that I decided to do it. But uh, I would have been up against this one, and, and it, it is good. really good. It's real good. I love it. Like, the whole concept of it. Um, it's unconventional, which is good. Yeah. I mean, it doesn't follow, like, well, I, I guess it follows some other stories, but it's it's got its own unique characteristics to it. It's, yeah, did we say the name of it already? Yeah. No. Oh, and it's from Manador. Oh. Um, there's a uh, horn stabbing. It's good stuff. Good stuff. Some bloodied bikini girls. Well, have you seen the the first ABCs of that? I have not. Oh well, in the in the first one, the uh, when I watched it, I didn't know what I was going to expect, and um, well, Carolyn was he was expecting Sesame Street. Let's <laughs> be honest. Well, Carolyn actually uh, uh, did the only pick of the week mm-hmm. and picked that movie. Oh, uh, but you can almost not consider it like. One movie. It's, I mean, it's, it's too many things to really call it. It's, and it's one thing. Uh, me personally, I actually loved. Oh my god, did I love the opening sequence? Was this the one with XXL? Yes. Oh yeah. You told well, us about that one on our other show, the Living Showcase podcast, which you should listen to on iTunes. <laughs> um, well, that one, like, I actually loved. A, there was a bunch that I loved, and there's of course a couple that I didn't like. Yeah. So much that I actually didn't talk about. Them. What letters didn't you like so much? I don't exactly remember the letters, but, uh, well, fart was one of them. I yeah. chuckled at it, but I was like, okay, I don't, I did not consider that, like, any type of horror genre type thing. You know, I was thinking I, that, you know, it was going to be more, Yeah. It, like, but my favorite one, actually, I didn't really consider, like, a horror. It was oh. uh, the, uh, the dog fight, the oh. dog fight one. Not toilet. No, to- well, toilet had a man eating toilet. As well. Oh, I didn't know that. You need to, you need to watch. Toilet is the like in that South Park episode. I don't know that. I don't really watch South Park. How dare really. you? <laughs> well, uh, I don't, I don't know who, what character it is, but someone's mom gets flushed down the toilet. Oh, that's funny. Yeah, it was like supposed to be tragic. You know? <laughs> well, no, like, um, <clears throat> T, like I said, was actually the. The letter uh-huh. of the first like contest that yeah, they had, contest. and toilet one, but it was it's a uh, it's a claymation. It doesn't matter. I already voted, and uh, November fifteenth is the last day that you can vote, I believe, or November fourteenth actually is the last day that you oh. can vote, and so, so that's Friday. 
And then November 15th, they actually uh, announce, I believe, the top 12. Oh. And then December 14th, I believe, is when they actually announce the winner. Really? Yeah. Okay. So okay. Uh, the link for M is for Manador will be right where Danny points. It's going to be right there. <laughs> The Amityville Horror, The Lost Tapes, is the events following the original book and movie shown through found footage dating back to 1976. A female TV intern leads a team of journalists, clergymen, and paranormal researchers into an investigation surrounding the infamous Amityville house. Have you seen any of the Amityville Horror movies? I think I've seen parts. I forget. Probably on USA. So the best quality. Of yeah, the original, the original one actually wasn't too bad. Yeah, um, but not on USA. Well, I'm sure. No, I doubt it. Yeah, and I think then, they cut um, out everything good about every movie. And then the most recent one, with um, oh my gosh, what's his name? I actually love this guy. Is it? Scott? It's not Scott Bakula. <laughs> <laughs> it's a. Uh, um, Oh, uh, Reynolds. Ryan Reynolds. Oh. He was in the... It was like 2003 or something like that. Yeah. I want to say. You know what? I think I did see that one. That one was... Uh, it was it was pretty good. But when I went to the theater to go see it, I I went with three girls. And oh, two, two of them were screamers. Me and the other girl. Like, no joke. At the movie? Yeah. <laughs> yeah. At the theater, they were screamers. So, every little thing. <laughs> every little thing. Like... You know, uh, something <laughs> fell. They screamed. So, oh, I've got popcorn! Yeah, pretty much. And so me and um, my other friend, her and I were just like, oh, my fucking God. We actually went um, to more like the center. We moved closer to people to get away from them. You moved away from your, your dates? Your uh, yeah, the other two that just kept screaming were like, okay, we can't do this. So we were like like three rows away from them, so they could just yell over there. Ah! We even told them we're like, okay, we ran out of Twizzlers. Yeah, we're gonna go over here. But okay, I don't. Me personally, I'm kind of done with the found footage because it's yeah. I don't know how many found footage horror movies actually come out a year. It was cool the first time, Blair Witch, but I think it's just getting overdone. Like how many? I mean, I know there's a very little sense of believability about some of these things, but mm-hmm. how often are we going to be like, oh, there's someone just discovered another tape, some VHS tape in their, yeah. in their parents' garage. Well, like, of someone killing someone else. Because um, when, um, the well, the first, like, paranormal activity, when that came out, yeah. and when Blair Witch came out, I mean, these were, like, when they were, like, first original, like, ideas. And even when I was talking to you about Wreck, um, yeah. One, two, and three now. Quarantine is basically the American version of how Wreck was. Okay. The first one is actually kind oh. of close to what the first Wreck was. Mm-hmm. I haven't seen the first Wreck in a long time. Second one is awesome. The third one is actually, um, I still liked it. But I know Caroline liked it a lot. Yeah, they actually changed it a little bit in the third one to yeah. where it started off more of like the found footage. Yeah. And then it got away from that. And it went into huh. an actual, like... And it morphed into it? Like, cinema. It evolved? Yes. But once like in a while, one. they they would do, like, the, the cinema look, and then they would go to, like, um, security footage at the same time. You know? That's kind of cool to mix them. Yeah. yeah. I like that. If it's just purely, like, I shot this on an iPhone kind of movies, I don't really care. Actually, Quite a new idea, guys. Go I on. don't. I don't know when... This one is actually coming out. I don't think it had a release date. Uh, next Tuesday. No, I, th- I think it's actually coming out like uh, probably January, February, which usually is not a good sign for movies. I you don't know, know if you've ever noticed that. Yeah. What would be cool if there was a found footage thing where they just hand you a VHS? Like, like there's no official screening for it. It's just like this VHS just gets passed around. I think that would be kind of cool. Because then it's a little bit more believable. Yeah. Kind of like how... And then no one can watch it because no one has a VHS one. (laughs) Beetlejuice 2 has been greenlit. The original from 1988 is about a ghost who is recruited to help haunt a house. 
There's no official script set for Beetlejuice 2 yet, but Tim Burton is set to direct, and Michael Keaton has agreed to reprise his role. Beetlejuice 2! I'm actually... I'm excited. I mean, like... I can't think of, like, the last Tim Burton movie that was actually, like, everybody really loved. Yeah. Was he Um, the one that did, uh... Was he the one that did Frank and Weenie? Yes. Okay, I think that one he actually won an award or was up for an award or something. I haven't seen it yet. I don't like how he took... He's... I don't like how he redid Frank and Weenie. Because Frank and Weenie was one of his that he did originally, like, probably late 80s, early 90s. I could be wrong. But... He had, like, this probably no more than 20-minute short that he expanded on and made into a 90-minute movie. Mm-hmm. And I'm like, you've already done that. Do something different. Come mm-hmm. on. So he did that one recently, which I haven't seen, but I don't want to. Uh, Alice in Wonderland, don't care. I watched it. It was all right. I turned it off pretty early on. Oh, okay. Yeah. I was like, this is not Alice in Wonderland. <laughs> this is stupid. Did he do... Charlie and the Chocolate Factory? Okay, that one was okay. But, like, a lot of other people giving a backstory to Charlie and the Chocolate Factory that made him, like, not to Charlie, but to Willy Wonka, that made him, like, sentimental and, like, that was kind of... Made him weird. Yeah. It was a little different, but... I liked it. I liked it before when he was weird and he was just weird, not he's weird because his parents beat him or whatever the hell it was. That was... No, I don't... <clears throat> I I'm a fan of Tim Burton. Early and, Tim Burton. And I don't know. I mean, I do enjoy like his movies no matter what. Yeah. Because that's just one of those guys that I just he's got. A, I just enjoy it. Kooky fun. But I do understand why you know it gets nice, yeah. it gets bad reviews. Why certain ones got yeah. bad reviews. But um, <clears throat> I guess in a sense, Beetlejuice two is one of those ones that. I, I don't know if I want to call it, like, a bittersweet thing. Because, like, you, you think, like, this is something that you want... Yeah, but it's been so to long. Get. Yeah, it's... That's like it, how the talks about Ghostbusters 3 is... Yeah. It's like, I want it, but I really don't know well, if you, I do. Well, because, like, I mean, you worry about stuff like this, about yeah. remakes and sequels and stuff that are, you know, 20 and 20-plus 20 years. Yeah. It, it seems like, you know, that those actors are trying to hold on to, like what people know them for. Like, Michael Keaton's like, see, I'm still relevant. I haven't been in anything in years, but I'm still going to be Beetlejuice. (laughs) And then have Alan Thicke, or or Robin Thicke, dress up like me. (laughs) Oh, and... Miley Cyrus. And the, uh, and I guess Katy Perry is, like, her name kind of got thrown in there. (sighs) I don't know how I feel about that, because... I don't know. I don't know how she is with acting. Like, at all. If she's anything like she is with singing. Yeah. And I guess then you have to like think about, oh, she's, you know then, if she got into it, then she would probably be on the soundtrack somewhere. Oh, yeah, definitely. Which is, yeah. oh, man, I just. Can you imagine it. if she did the theme song? Oh, that's what I was thinking right oh. now. I was like, oh, no, a, a new version of like the Beetlejuice theme, but done by Katy Perry. Has lyrics. That yeah. Are just horrible. That <laughs> would ruin Danny Elfman. Like, I would see myself and, like, many of my friends, probably even you, just be like, oh, that's it. Yeah. You had to start the movie with, like, the revert of Katy Perry. <laughs> Time to We're done. Out. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> but <clears throat> can I have my money and all of my money back, please? <laughs> well, to be honest, I don't know where they're going to go with this. Because there is no, like... Yeah. I and mean, he's a ghost. He, he's basically... To be fair, I don't want Katy Perry to be in this, but I don't know who I want to actually be in this, because I don't know the story yeah. or what it, anything is, but still, it yeah. just seems like, let's not try to cash in on a pop star's mm-hmm. success, please. I mean, it might be cool if they do a whole... Maybe it's like a Beetlejuice revenge thing, and he goes after... If he kills Katy Perry, that would be cool. Well, no, if he goes after, you know, all the, the main characters and stuff again. If everybody kind of <laughs> revises their role yeah. when they show up. I mean, you could even say, oh, you know, like, actually, these characters are dead because it's 100 years later. Because <laughs> you had a couple ghosts in there, you know. It's, yeah. It, it could go numerous directions. But yeah. 
I don't know. I have a feeling that some people would actually be like, okay, I'm not doing that. Yeah. You know, probably uh, Baldwin wouldn't. I I really don't see him. Alec or the other one? Which Baldwin was in there? Uh, I think it was Alec, right? Yeah. Anyway, one of the bald ones. But I, I, I just I one. just don't see him because he's he does uh, Thirty Rock. Yes, Alec. Then. Yeah. Okay. So, so I I just don't see him wanting to be a part of it. But I am glad that they did get Michael Keaton. Mm-hmm. Because basically, well, I know it for a fact, worked. if if they would have been like, oh, okay, we got Tim Burton, but no Michael Keaton, yeah. we would have been like, no. Yeah. No, thanks. And, you know, no offense to Tim Burton, but I feel that if they got a different director to come in and Michael Keaton, I would, like, that would probably sway people more. Yeah. Like, there would be more people that would see that if Michael Keaton, as long as Michael Keaton, like, the Beetlejuice... Show it up. It depends on who does it. And then, yeah, like, and then if, had like a fresh. If M. Night Shal- Shyamalan or someone did it, then no. <laughs> I think if M. Night Shyamalan was going to do it, Michael Keaton would be like, no, no, I'm good. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> be like, you made Mark Wahlberg talk to a plastic tree. <laughs> Willingly. Uh, I'm good. No, I just, I, I don't know how I feel about it. Yeah, let's let's hope that never comes to that. <laughs> but um, anyway, that is actually the show. Mm-hmm. So please leave your uh, comments, especially about uh, anything to do with how your feelings are on uh, found footage and well, a new Beetlejuice. And also go check out the ABCs of Death. Vote for Emma's for Matador before November fourteenth. And if you have any questions, either leave a comment, like you said, or write us into theonlygenre at gmail.com. And please be sure to check out our other show, The Living Showcase Podcast, on iTunes. And also, uh, of course, find us on Facebook and Twitter. I'm, of course, Chandra Morant, Graves 6 vi 6 And I'm at Danny Meckler. Simple. All right. Well, thank you very much for watching and listening, and thank you very much for consuming our brain. Back it up! Hey there, horror fans. This is Sean Vidmar with the only pick of the week. I decided to pick the following television series. This series is actually about a very brilliant, charismatic, and psychotic serial killer, Joe Carroll, played by James Perfay. And the person that put him behind bars, former FBI agent Ryan Hardy, played by Kevin Bacon. Carroll breaks out of prison originally, to finish what he started before going in. Hardy captures him again only to discover that Carol has a cult following. This television series is very interesting, it was very well written, especially since it has nice little blindsiding events that happens in it. I for one actually really enjoyed this. It, it, the first season originally aired January 21st, 2013 on Fox and is now actually available on Netflix. Second season is due to air January 20th, 2014 and I for one am looking forward to it. So I again am Sean Vidmar and this is the only pick of the week. Hey look at me. Okay, I just want to make sure that we're in focus. <laughs> Watching that is, if you're listening, then you did not see any of that. But you'll still hear back you up. <laughs> you still hear all of our stupid shit. I think we're going overboard with this now. <laughs> We've gonna, never done this. It's gonna be like a like like just back you up. It's gonna be a flower opening up or something. Like gang bang back you <laughs> up. <laughs> anyway, I'm going to redo that. This chair leans back really far. Yeah, I almost I thought I was gonna break it actually when I was over there really. <laughs> <Yeah. laughs>